Hello friend, I hope you're all okay. You're all enjoying your life and doing great. And uh, you're obviously doing something very great in the year 2024, which is really just started and uh, hope you are enjoying with a focused mind and with the clear objectives of your life. Uh, today uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of the CT brain. I have already uploaded one of the video related to the anatomy of the uh, CT on the brain or uh, anatomy of the brain on the CT images, which include all the anatomical structure. How will uh, you appreciate all these anatomical structure on different uh, slices? Today, this is the part two in which I'm going to discuss about the vascular territory. Vascular territory involving the frontal lobe, the middle lobe, the right lobe, the occipital lobe, all that lobes including all these uh, vascular territories beside this i have also focused on to give you a clear idea about the vascular territory which is supplying the insular area basal ganglia lentiform nucleus and all these internal vital basic structure beside this i have also covered the anterior um, circulation the posterior circulation the vertebral basilar sister uh, system as well so all this would be a quite informative video uh, those who are a medical student or radiology residents or clinician they to some extent will be able to understand what and uh, what these territories are and where the infarct would be or where the hemorrhage would be so this will all be included in this uh, uh, this video i do hope this would be a quite uh, useful and quite easy video for you so let's start watching in my previous video uh, with the name of uh, basics of uh, brain ct radiological anatomy of brain with regards to ct images has been discussed anterior posterior middle cranial fossa were discussed uh, frontal, posterior, temporal and occipital lobe were outlined, uh, brain uh, stems and its parts, medulla oblongata, pons, uh, midbrains were discussed at length, basal ganglia were sufficiently covered. On this image uh, you can appreciate the insula in front of the salvian fissure. On the brain specimen you cannot uh, normally see the insula. Uh, because it is covered by the upper column, the frontal upper column, the temporal upper column and the parietal upper column. Basal ganglia is uh, made up of grey matter and lined by the white matter. It is in front of the sylvian fissure but it lies deep and it is a buried part. Uh, beside this here on that image you can appreciate the central sulcus it is the only sulcus which is reaching the midline and it separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. On this image you can appreciate a uh, mild degree of brain atrophy because the sulci are uh, uh, prominent and uh, you can appreciate the CSF extracellular space slightly uh, increase are prominent. Here uh, the salvian fissure is clearly visible in front of the salvian fissure uh, you can appreciate there is a insula. So the insula on this image is clearly visible that is again I would say the deep part and it is covered by the uh, frontal upper column and the temporal upper column and uh, this is made up of uh, mainly gray matter and lined by the white matter here on this image again a revision of the anatomy you can appreciate the frontal lobe and then down you can appreciate the lateral horn uh, lateral ventricle and the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle and the, you can also see the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle and then you can appreciate the occipital horn of the lateral ventricle. In between the lateral ventricle, you can also appreciate choroidal plexus on this image. On this image, uh, a fibrous tissue se uh, septum, uh, which is made up of uh, dura matter, uh, is called as FARC cerebri. You can also appreciate the FARC cerebri on this image. So, uh, parietal lobe uh, can also be seen on this image, 
frontal lobe and the occipital lobe in view can be seen uh, on this CT axial image. As we go slightly high, so again you can appreciate the frontal lobe uh, in continuity and the occipital lobe uh, can also be seen in the continuity. The parietal lobe can also be seen. You can appreciate the lateral ventricle. Here the lateral ventricle is visible. So it's a temporal uh, horn of the lateral ventricle can be seen. Uh, in the image you can also appreciate that uh, fibrous septum of dura mater uh, which is fox cerebri is visible on the image as well. On the CT brain, uh, certain calcification can also be seen and these calcifications are happens to be normal on the CT images that is because of the age uh, related changes. Uh, however, if you see any white uh, on the CT images, it could be either blood or it could be either calcium or sometime it may be metallic uh, sutures or maybe uh, foreign body you have to be careful for all that but there are uh, some specific presentations of certain calcification uh, because of the age group the commonest one which you can appreciate on this image is the basal ganglia calcification it's actually the part of the aging so very clearly uh, visible basal ganglia calcification uh, that is the area just adjacent to the uh, third ventricle here you can appreciate the third ventricle and just on the either side of the third ventricle there is calcification this is the place for the basal ganglia calcification on this image uh, you can appreciate the third ventricle and uh, just uh, in the midline there is calcification, a tiny dot of the calcification that is pineal gland calcification. So here the pineal gland calcification uh, is visible. On that uh, slide you can see that the small tiny calcific dot in the midline and that is the pineal gland calcification. Pineal gl gland calcification, choroid plexus calcification and the basal ganglia calcifications are the age related uh, uh, process you can call it aging process but if in some case like in children less than 10 years of age if you come across any pineal gland calcification uh, you should suspect uh, some pathology and you have to uh, work out for that. So here on this image you can appreciate the choroid plexus calcification. How come we know that uh, this is calcification this is not the blood because both appears white on the CT images. Mind you that calcification would always be bilateral and would always be symmetrical. If it is unilateral it would likely be a pathology. And the second thing is you have to put the cursor on the surrounding bone and the bony hounds field or calcium hounds field would be either 700 or 800 or uh, 900 uh, uh, hounds unit uh, while uh, hemorrhage would be having the less one like ranging from the 100 or 200 hounds unit. So that is the another way to confirm whether this white appearance on the uh, images uh, is calcification or its hemorrhage. So again have a look on this slide you can appreciate the choroid plexus calcification and uh, you can also appreciate the pineal gland calcification. These two calcifications can be seen on the image. Uh, these calcifications are age related calcification. Uh, this is because of the aging process and you should not label it as a pathology. This color coding slide being shown to uh, explain the blood supply of the brain which is extremely valuable and uh, one should have to keep eye on when uh, he or she is reporting the CT brain. There are mainly three arteries uh, which supplies uh, three particular territories on the brain. Uh, 
color coder uh, color coding is shown uh, the blue color is shown uh, for the anterior cerebral artery while red color is shown for the middle cerebral artery and the yellow color is shown for the posterior cerebral artery anterior cerebral artery supply the parasagittal part of the cerebral hemisphere here you can appreciate it's a para sagittal part of the cere uh, cerebral hemisphere extending from the frontal parietal and occipital part of the uh, cerebrum so here this blue color is denoted for the uh, anterior cerebral artery and this is the parasagittal area and it supplies the parasagittal part of the cerebral hemisphere middle cerebral artery is the biggest territory of the brain it supplies most of the frontal lobe, temporal lobe and parietal lobe. Mainly the temporal lobe but most of the frontal and the parietal lobe is also supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery supplies the posterior part of the cerebrum. Uh, it's, it supplies occipital and uh, maybe to some extent it supplies the temporal uh, and parietal a uh, part of temporal uh, lobe and the parietal lobe uh, every radiologist should know the extent of the blood supply and its territory if you go a little inferior uh, you can appreciate that the parasagittal part or aspect of the brain is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery uh, middle cerebral artery is visible uh, and is shown with a red red color but just in front of the middle uh, cerebral territory you can appreciate uh, with the name of MCA perforator. So this actually middle cerebral artery perforation uh, or perforated artery supplies the basal ganglia. As I mentioned earlier that the middle cerebral artery occupies the biggest territory there is two type the main middle cerebral artery and its perforated arteries. Perforated arteries actually the ones who supplies the basal ganglia and uh, a part of the thalamus is also supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. The basal ganglia is only supplied by the uh, perforated arteries of the middle cerebral arteries. On the image you can see that the yellow color uh, is shown the posterior cerebral artery so the thalamus is also with the yellow color so it's mean that the uh, thalamus is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery while the rest of the basal ganglia is supplied by the uh, mca perforated arteries if, if you go a little bit more inferior so you will be able to see the cerebellum and cerebellum is shown with the uh, green color and vba is written on it VBA is stand for the vertebral or vertebral basilar artery or it is also called as a posterior circulation. This actually supplies the brain stem. So the brain stem is supplied by the vertebral and basilary system or vertebral basilary artery. From the arch of aorta on the right side brachiocephalic artery arises which further divide into right uh, subclavian artery and right common carotid artery. If you have a look to the left side so the left subclavian artery straight away arises from the arch of aorta and the left common carotid artery directly arises from the arch of aorta. So uh, now we will discuss about the right common carotid artery and the left common carotid artery. Now focus on the common carotid artery. Common carotid artery goes further and it divides into two. The internal carotid artery you can appreciate with the name of ICA and uh, external carotid artery is visible both on the right and on the left side. Internal carotid artery has no branches extracranially. There is zero branch extracranially for the uh, internal carotid artery. Internal carotid arteries goes upward and it enters into the brain to the cranium through foramen lacerum into the cranial cavity and 
divided into anterior cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery. Here you can appreciate that this internal carotid artery when enters into the cranial cavity it divides into anterior uh, cerebral artery and middle cerebral, cerebral artery and you can appreciate that here on this image that is why it is called as an anterior circulation. Anterior circulation is via internal carotid artery and into the middle dividing into middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery forming the uh, anterior circulation of the brain. To understand the posterior circulation first you have to look that the vertebral basilar arteries consist of two vertebral arteries and uh, vertebral arteries arise from the subclavian artery. So these two vertebral right and left arises from the subclavian artery will go through the foramen at vertebral artery foramen and uh, enters into the cranial cavity uh, anterior to the medulla oblongata and spinal cord. Basilary artery together with vertebral artery supply mainly brain stem and cerebellum and that is why it is called as the posterior circulation which you can appreciate on this image. Uh, you can see that the vertebral artery is going and uniting with the basilar artery and further it is going upward to divide into right and the left posterior uh, cerebral artery. So, it is forming the posterior circulation of the brain. Just a quick revision have a look there is two common carotid arteries which is going upward and forming the internal carotid artery and external carotid arteries. Have a look to the uh, two vertebral arteries which coming forward to upward to basilary artery and then basilary artery is entering into from the posterior cerebral artery which is mainly the posterior circulation of the brain. Coming to understand the stroke there is mainly two types of stroke one is ischemic stroke because of embolus or because of any blockage uh, into the normal flow of the blood to the brain tissues causing the ischemic uh, infarction or ischemic stroke and the second one is hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke may be hematoma uh, with without ventricular extension sometime uh, this hemorrhage will not be extended into the uh, ventricular system. In some cases there will be hematoma with ventricular extension this could be secondary to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Subarachnoid hemorrhage will eventually go to the ventricular and there will be a ventricular extension. And the third type is a primary subarachnoid hemorrhage. There will be a primary subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, there will be no extension uh, into the uh, ventricular system. Ischemic stroke or ischemic infarct will appear as in hypodense and uh, for ischemic stroke you have to look for those. Those stand for especially T stand for the vascular territory you have to look for which uh, vascular territory it has involved and then H stand for the hypodensity. There will be definitely hypodensity as ischemic infarct uh, happens to be hypodense. Uh, next comes is uh, edema you have to look for the surrounding edema and then S stand for swelling and shift whether there is any midline shift or not and E stand for evolution. Evolution mean that look for the interval what type of a changes whether there is uh, bleeding within it whether there is any other uh, associated abnormality so then you have to look for the uh, evolutions. One another worth noting point is that most of the stroke occurs in gangliothalamic capsular region which is supplied by the lenticulostrial branch of the middle cerebral arteries. Here on this image you can appreciate uh, that there is a hypodense area involving the left basal ganglia. So, uh, in this image you can appreciate that there is a slightly uh, 
pressure effect on the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle on these images and uh, these are all associated with surrounding edema so this is basically left ganglia infarct worth noting point uh, is here that the brain stem is uh, basically supplied by the basilary artery and vertebrally artery and uh, this is uh, the infarct in basilary artery and vertebral arteries are happens to be quite dangerous because it supplies the vital organ it, it supplies the respiration it supply the heart beating and it uh, also supplies the temperature regulation so in case of uh, involvement of the basilary artery and vertebral artery uh, it would be uh, or it likely be a dangerous and uh, it will be more fatal while the territory of anterior cerebral artery uh, which supplies vast majority of the cerebrum if a stroke happens into the anterior cerebral artery or into the main uh, middle cerebral artery together so a patient uh, will uh, not die or uh, maybe there is unlikely uh, for the death because it just supply the motor skills cognitive and thinking this would be affected the patient may be paralyzed but his heart will be functioning his respiration would be okay and his temperature regulations would be fine Midbrain is uh, supplied by the bifurcation of the basilary artery and posterior cerebral artery and uh, small arteries of the cerebellum. So brain stem and cerebellum are supplied by the basilary artery and uh, these actually supplies the vital center. So any embolism in that arteries would be fatal embolism and it will cause fatal consequences. Here on this image uh, you can appreciate there is uh, infarctions of the posterior circulation. So on the posterior circulation there is a occipital lobe is involved and uh, as I mentioned that posterior circulation also applies the posterior uh, cerebellum and the occipital area. So if the infarction, uh, infarction occurs at that uh, stage it will in, uh, interferes with the vital structure. Look at uh, uh, there is a, um, a compression on the uh, cistern and uh, on the second uh, image there is a cerebellum infarct and again uh, there is another infarct which is visible. So this is the uh, posterior circulation infarct which are most likely dangerous. On these two images infarct has shown and uh, uh, this is hypodense area and the area which is supplied by the left middle cerebral artery posterior division. For the treatment of the ischemic infarct uh, there is uh, thrombolytic medicines and you have to treat the patient with thrombolytic medications even though if the CT scans appear normal at early stage uh, the uh, clinically uh, the patient would be candidate for the starting of the thrombolytic medicines and you would see that in later uh, there will be changes uh, on the CT images and you will be able to appreciate that this was the uh, ischemic uh, stroke. But in case of a hemorrhagic stroke, a thrombolytic medicine is contraindicated. So if there is hemorrhage and you misdiagnose or you, you start treating with the thrombolytic medicine, it means you are just uh, um, putting the patients towards more danger. So therefore, this, this is the important point. One should be very much careful between the treatment of the ischemic uh, stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke. Here on this image you can appreciate infarction hypodense area of the left middle cerebral artery with midline shift and ventricular effacement on the right side while on the left side infarctions and midline shifting and uh, ventricular effacement can be seen on this image quite clearly. Here on this image uh, you can appreciate the infarction at frontal region at the territory of anterior cerebral artery while on the second image on the left side it's a sharp, sharply circumscribed hypodense edema actually this arrowhead is uh, indicating that uh, in the right middle cerebral artery territory so the right middle cerebral artery territory it's showing that particular infarct which is quite visible so another uh, slide 
for the infarction at the area of the frontal region. So, here on the left side you can appreciate hypodense area and uh, which occupy the left uh, anterior cerebral artery territory. Blood supply of the brain and its territory has been discussed with sufficient explanation in this video. Beside different types of uh, strokes were also explained. I do hope it uh, will benefit you in your clinical studies. Uh, keep watching my videos and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Wishing you all the best.